Hey guys, what's going on? It's your buddy Keith here again, live in the control room at Essex Recording Studios, just outside London in England. And today I've got a very cool ESP guitar to share with you guys. If you're new to the channel, click like, click subscribe. It's totally free. Come join the circle of friends. There's almost 1,600 of us right now. And uh, you get to see very cool guitars from all around the world each and every day that arrive at the studio up close and in person. So that you know exactly what they're like as if you were holding them in your very own hands. You get to see all the fine details, all the things that can help you identify what makes a true one versus a counterfeit one. So many guitars are being faked in China these days. It's absolutely crazy. We got a fake ESP uh, V Custom from Poland the other day. Uh, we'll do a video on that. But yeah, these, uh, these videos are really helpful to a lot of people and we just like hanging out, drooling over guitars and talking about them. So without further ado, here is the ESP SV Flyin' V, kind of Randy Rhodes style guitar. This is a bit of what I would call like an exaggerated Randy Rhodes, because it's a bit bigger. Very solid guitar. Um, you have your Floyd Rose, you've got your dual EMG pickups. It looks like dual 81s. And what I really like about this model, because I'm a sucker for some bling, is I love the abalone dot inlays with the Mother of Pearl ESP at the 12th fret. So you got 24 frets, which a lot of people want, and it's getting harder and harder to find these days for whatever reason. Um, so yeah, 24 frets and the abalone bling. Love it. A plain old ESP on the headstock, which I love too, because today you're only getting that from the custom shop. You know, no model on the, the truss rod cover or anything like that, just ESP, so you know it's the very best. Great case, by the way. Um, you know, they really, they really do it big, ESP, when it comes to their... V cases. You've got good storage compartment here that Velcros. Um, it's all kind of a nice material. Good solid plastic handle there. And on the top, you see you've got the ESP stencil logo. We've talked about it before. They do this style with like kind of like the, the black leather with the white piping and then an ESP logo here. There's all sorts of different ESP logos, metal plates. One's uh, small ones, big ones, but in general, this is what an ESP case looks like on the outside. All right, so I'm going to take this V out, and we're just going to have a bit of a more detailed look at it. So you can see the different contour lines on the body. Uh, my favorite one being this. How cool is that? This kind of ergonomic cutaway right here is uh i guess that's for your beer belly while you're holding it up against you but it just looks super cool you also have this cutaway there so you get nice easy access to these lower frets kind of looks like a uh very classy tuxedo that you might wear to a, a wedding white with the black pinstripes really dig it there's your input jack I'm getting focused, guys. There we go. Strap button. Your tips are looking good. Other nice thing about uh, white guitars is it's pretty tough for little dings in the lacquer and stuff to show up. So very forgiving. Uh, there's a little ding I just noticed. Where is it? Right here at the edge of this black bezel. You can kind of... There you go. Kind of make that out there. But can you know? Can you tell from a couple feet away? No, not not even from like a foot away. Uh, so that's the front of the guitar. I'll show you the nut real fast. One of the telltale signs that you've got uh, a, a a good Floyd is you see those marks on the top of the screws here. All all of those marks. That's generally the kind of thing you see on the the original stuff, the good stuff, as they say. Nice binding all throughout. Again, headstock tip. 
intact. Frets all look good. All right, let's flip her over. We actually just had another one of these in the uh, same configuration. I think that one might have been a 2005. This one's a 2006. We know this because it's a SS standard series 06 with the Godo tuners. Really nice. Really, really nice. For all you ESP aficionados and those of you that might be getting into the brand new, the SS on the serial number doesn't always mean standard series. You can get custom shop guitars with SS. And those are often the signature series, which people um, think because it says SS, oh, it's just a standard guitar. No, all the Metallica guitars, for instance, the James Hetfield and uh, Kirk Hammett guitars will have SS in the serial number, unless it's a super limited run where they're doing like 10 of something or 50 of something. But even still, um, they're built. those are built in the custom shop. It's been addressed on the ESP forums from the ESP uh, administrators on the website, making it quite clear that they are built in the custom shop, even though they say SS. It's because it's not for standard series on those guitars. All right. Unfinished neck, which comes to a V point nicely. Here's your strap button. There's that cutaway we talked about. Here you go, there's your tremolo cavity. We don't have the back cover, but those can be easily sourced or made. Still has the little CE and garbage bin stickers on the back plate. All right, just showing you everything here so we know what we're working with. If you want to buy this guitar, it's for sale on our website, EssexRecordingStudios.com, and also on Reverb.com. They are our good friends who host our website. Thanks, guys. Uh, if you want to chat about it, hit me up on Facebook, Essex Recording Studios. Hit me up on Instagram, Essex Recording Studios. Tweet at me. That's just Essex Recording. They don't give us enough characters. But yeah, guys, so this is the... ESP take on our Jackson Randy Rhodes, essentially. It's a bit bigger, a bit exaggerated, um, very comfortable to play. I personally love the neck. Really, really love it. And if you're looking to kind of sw switch things up a bit, and you're mostly a Jackson guy, highly encourage you to give ESP a shot. They're made in Japan, and that is their, their print. It's not like they're import ones. They do have a USA custom shop now, but uh, they've always been a Japanese brand. They're a Japanese company, much like Ibanez. And, uh, you know, their, their top, top guitars are built in Japan. As opposed to Jackson, you have the Volute or Volute. I don't, I don't know how to say that word because it's never really come up in practical conversation. But you got this bad boy, which I think Gibson started doing that first. Uh, as opposed to a scarf joint which uh, Jackson uses. It's a little bit of a difference there. And again, you have a little bit more of a dynamic design with more things going on, more of these cutaways and edges and bevels and even in the back here, you know, so it's not totally flat in the back and flat in the front. So you might find yourself really enjoying one of these. Cool. A bit more, more modern as well with the unfinished neck and with the uh, abalone dot inlays as opposed to shark fins, which are starting to get a bit dated for some people. Not for your buddy Keith, though. I, uh, I love shark fin inlays and all as well. All right? Cool. Let me get out of here because I've got a room full of guitars. I'll show you what's coming up next. We got this one, 1981 Fender video to do. We've got this one, and I've got all of these to do today. All of those... Oh, yeah, and this Charvel, and that Fender, and uh, I think we got a Jackson in there, and we got a Gibson in there. We got one hiding out in the back there. So those are all videos I have to do this weekend. Plus, we got more stuff coming in. We got two, uh, we got ESP and a Washburn Dimebag guitar coming in. So bear with me. 
and uh, more cool guitars coming your way, everybody. Later.